With the latest update of Luminar Neo version 1.4, we now have a clone tool. But if you're unsure how to use it, this is the video for you. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to give you four tips for success with the new cloning tool in Luminar Neo. Let's get started. Tip number one, when to use the erase tool and when to use the cloning tool. In an image like this, if you have something that you want to get rid of completely and it's easy enough to remove, then I would recommend using the erase tool. It's really simple to just draw over the thing you want to remove, click erase, and the program does all the work for you. Et voila, removed. Likewise, spots like this that are in the middle of a large area, it's easy to remove using the erase tool. You can also probably fairly successfully remove most of this rope. It gets tricky up to the top, but you can use the erase tool for things like this, where there's clearly a subject against a background. And you can see that it does a really good job. I'm not going to complete the erasing on this image because I want to show you when to use the cloning tool. Let's say I want to take out this building or some of these things on the bottom here. I think some of them will be easily handled by the erase tool, but I've attempted things like removing the lights and it didn't do such a good job. So you can see that I can do little bit by little bit, but if I attempt to remove this whole light standard, I end up with just a big mess, like so. So I'm going to restore and try the clone tool instead. To find the clone tool, it's all the way at the bottom. When you first open it, you'll see that it says click to set source in the middle of the image. And your cursor will be a circle with a little crosshairs in the middle, but it doesn't represent the size of your brush. You'll notice that if I change the size over here using the slider, then you see the size of the brush. But when you put it over the image, you don't. That's a trick you need to know. So to set your source, that means the place that you're going to clone from, I'm just going to go in the sky here, somewhere up there. Now you'll notice once I've clicked to set the source, now the brush size is showing. I'm going to get a smaller brush, and you can use the keyboard shortcuts, the square bracket keys, or the slider to change the brush size. And I'm gonna change the softness a little bit lower and leave the strength at 100% because I wanna try and get rid of this whole building here and just paint sky into it. So the source that I've chosen is here in the middle of the sky and I'm just going to move the area that I'm gonna clone into slightly down and over to the left. Now when I click, you'll notice that they're linked together. So as I move the brush, the source also moves. When you're cloning, I also recommend changing the source frequently. You do that by holding the Alt Option key and reclicking a new location. So I want to just clone from the sky down into this area to cover it. And just like that, the building is gone. One thing you want to be aware of when you're using the clone tool is that it does tend to remove texture, especially if you're using it at a lower opacity. So there's the before and after. Now if I want to go clean it up a little bit, I could do the edge here with the erase tool. So they work really well together. So just as a summary for tip number one, know when to use the erase tool and when to use the clone tool. The race tool has content aware fill and AI built into it. The clone tool is just a copy and paste from the source area to the target area. So if a race isn't working, try the clone tool and vice versa. Tip number two, use the clone tool at a lowered opacity if you just want to lighten or darken an area. For example, I already used the portrait tools on this image but she still has dark circles under her eyes that I'd like to lighten a little bit more. Let me show you how to do that with the clone tool. 
First, I'm going to zoom in to about 50% so I can really see the area that I'm working with. I want my brush to be a little smaller, but maybe not quite so soft. And when you're using this tool in this way, I would suggest lowering the strength to about 20 to 30%, somewhere in that range. Then if I want to paint over this dark area, the source I'm going to set is literally just right below it. So I'm actually going to click there and then use my brush just above. Start painting. There's the before and after with just one simple brush stroke. Another side tip is to change your source often. If you're doing an area like this, hold down the Alt Option key and you can select a new source. So you're coming from a different area. Do that so that you don't end up repeating patterns. That's a key indicator that you've done cloning. Let's do this eye. So I selected an area just below using the Alt Option key and just lightening the dark circle a little bit. If you'd like to have a keyboard shortcuts PDF cheat sheet, I'll put a link for that in the description area below for you. I'm using the keyboard shortcuts to change the size of the brush without moving my mouse over to the slider. So to do that, I'm using the square bracket keys, left and right. See what it's doing before and after. Next, that leads us right into tip number three. Because there's no masking or undo, the trick here is that if you're happy with one area that you've used the clone tool on, close the tool and reopen it if you want to continue in another area. This is a mistake that I made because I'd done a bunch of cloning, I was happy with it, then I went and made a mistake somewhere else and I had to undo the entire tool just to fix it. So I've closed it and now I'm going to open it again because I want to work on this dark shadow on the corner of her eye. So once again, I'm going to lower the strength and get a small brush. I'm keeping the softness a bit lower so that it doesn't blend out into her eyelashes. So when you want to keep it to a defined area like this, use a lower softness or harder edge brush. I'm going to make this brush a little smaller again. I find when you use the keyboard shortcuts, it jumps more with the size. So for example, 10 to 34. And if you want something in between, then you do have to use the slider. So once again, I'm just going to move the brush from my source just ever so slightly to the right so that I'm drawing from this lighter area in to the dark area. And once again, changing the source so that I'm coming from slightly above and then slightly below. So I'm slowly, slowly just getting rid of this shadow that was on the corner of her eye. Can you see how that's working well? Now I want to do something similar over here on her left eye to get rid of these dark patches and shadow in this upper corner here. It's better to make a few extra passes than try and do it all in one pass and make a big mess. That looks pretty good now. There's a little bit of mess sort of in here, and this is where the erase tool works well as a companion with the clone tool. So I'm literally just going to do one spot and that cleans it up nicely. Tip number four is a bit of a hack or workaround to be able to get blend modes for the clone tool. So why might you need that? Darken blend mode is great if you want to add darkness to a certain area without affecting the already medium or darker areas. For example, if we look at this strap over here on her shirt, if I want to darken the white area without affecting the red. If I just try the clone tool at a lower opacity, I can use the same type of idea that I did on her eyes to darken the strap. So if I choose the source area over here and just paint over the strap, and that's not too bad in this case, but if I didn't want to alter the red or the outside, then it's not a perfect job. So let's undo that. 
And here's my trick. Duplicate the layer. Okay, keyboard shortcut on that is just D on your keyboard. And then change the blend mode of the layer to darken. Now, when I go down to the clone tool, I'm gonna zoom in a tiny bit here. I'm going to set the opacity to about 30% again. Set my source. And just make one pass over the area. Do you see the difference? It's subtle, but you can see that there's more integrity of the strap area of her top because it was not darker than the area that I was pulling from the source. So it only paints in the areas where it's lighter. So there's a little trick. Likewise, if I overpaint and make the area too dark, there's an easy fix because we're on a duplicate layer. Now it's too dark. We just go to the layer properties and dial the opacity down and you have full control over how much you can darken that area. Cool trick, hey? Likewise, you could do the same thing. If we wanted to lighten under her eyes more, you could use another duplicate layer and set that blend mode to lighten. If you want to see more Luminar Neo videos, click one on the screen now. Please remember to hit like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any new tutorials. Thanks for watching, I will see you next time.